Hey everybody, I'm glad you're back and looking at concepts and principles in Kempo Systems. And we're, today we're going to be talking about double factor parries and blocks. Now traditionally throughout the years, most parries and blocks are taught in the horse stance. So in this particular case, we're going to be talking about double factor in which both hands are being used to parry and or block a weapon. I was taught this many years ago in looking at an inward parry to an outward parry and the opposite hand inward parry to outward parry in the horse stance. Also the lower case application of this is here's the first block, here's the second for double factor. Here's the first, here's the second. Getting away from this and more towards modern and postmodern Kempo systems is applying these in a neutral bow or a fighting stance in which a double factor parry is normally front hand initiates, back hand reciprocates. Starting the parry with the left hand in this case in a left neutral bow and right hand outward. And in a right neutral bow, right initiates, left follows through or lower half motions from, the, from a neutral bow is stepping back, here's one and two. Or in, from the right neutral bow, one and two. Some of the rules and concepts behind this is that the first hand does not need to touch the weapon. It is a gauge hand. It helps me determine distance and speed of my opponent coming in and does not actually have to touch. It's not what is actually going to affect his height, his width, or his depth. The second hand, though, must touch and must affect our opponent. In other words, this hand, as it comes to my center line, does not have to touch, but the second hand does. We're going to be looking at this in uppercase and lowercase motions the first uppercase motion is going to be a left step in punch. I'm going to borrow Jarek for a moment and we're going to look at it from this direction. So Jarek's going to gauge arm to show that this fist cannon will go to my head. It's not a step through punch, it's just a step in punch. Now Jarek does so, I'm going to step back. Here's the first hand. In this case, yes, I did touch, but it doesn't have to. As I parry and ride the motion, his weight's going to come forward, my left hand is going to come up to replace it. Now this can and will manipulate the path of travel of his attack. Once again, we're going to shift to this direction as Jarek, let me see, he's going to gauge arm to make sure that this is going to go to my head and as he steps, I moved him offline. It's going beyond my shoulder. He was going towards his 12. Now he is going to 1.30 or 2 o'clock. This is going to make sure, this outward pair is going to make sure that he does not follow through and collapse, collapsible deflection into an elbow or spin around into a spinning back fist or elbow. It's a positional and pressing check. The next lower half motion we're going to be looking at is Jarek is actually going to be using a knee. We're going to come from this direction here. And let's say that we're closer. Instead of your traditional kick, let's look at a double factor motion in something like a clinch into a knee. As Jarek clinches and he's preparing this knee to hit either my bladder, or my groin, or even the leg to give me a good dead, dead leg, I can initiate the double factor parry by this inward downward palm up hammer fist to the inside of his leg and notice my right hand here is pre-positioned to continue it and help me get out of the clinch. The same thing would be true as if he's coming in for a kick, we see this twice in the American Kempo system, uh, as he brings his right leg up for the kick, here's the first block as I step out and continuing the motion away. Thank you, Jarek. I hope that you look at your systems and see where these double factor motions, inward to outward parries, or maybe it's a double tap motion, comes in in your systems. That you understand it, learn it, and are able to teach it to others. 
See you next time. Bye.